better run, man. Life's a pain, but you got me. Yeah, life's a pain, but I got you. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And today we are going to talk briefly about Craven the Hunter. Now, I'm not going to go into this hardcover. Uh, we are going to do it in upcoming episodes, though, because obviously we have a Craven movie coming out from Sony that may or may not be tying in to their big plan of what they're doing with uh, Spider-Man villains that don't actually meet Spider-Man. <laughs> uh, but today I just want to talk about the CinemaCon footage that came out. Um, I'm not going to go into major details, but there is some spoiler things here, and there is a rating for this film that we got, which is pretty awesome and unexpected, actually, in, at least in my opinion. Um, but this hardcover here, Craven's Last Hunt, the deluxe edition, I've had it for a while. It features the first appearance of Craven, and then probably his most iconic story ever, which is Craven's Last Hunt, reprinted in here. And there's also some other cool things like Soul of the Hunter, and a time where Craven met Kane, the clone of Spider-Man. So we are going to break this hardcover down. This is probably all the Craven stories I'm going to talk about, though, before the movie comes out. So we're not going to do a full history of the character, but we're going to hit everything that is the least in this hardcover in future episodes. So if you want to check that out with us, stay subscribed to this channel, and we'll get into those very, very soon. But the main thing I want to talk about today is the movie, which is coming out this summer in October. Um, so kind of the time frame of when the first Venom movie came out, and I believe the second one or around that time. And uh, October seemed to be a, a really good month. Joker also came out in October, and that did really well. And that was a, a villain movie without the main hero. It didn't have Batman in it. So this is a good plan, I think, to release this movie in October. But what I didn't expect was that they announced the actual rating of the film at CinemaCon. So CinemaCon, Aaron Taylor Johnson, obviously the actor who plays Craven, who I wasn't sure about. I think he's a good actor, but I wasn't really sure about him playing Craven when they announced it. But from what I'm hearing, the footage they showed off was really awesome and kind of unexpected because this movie is going to be rated R, which I am just blown away by because... You know, Sony obviously hasn't done that, you know, so far with their movies. And I figured the plan was that they were building kind of a Sinister Six multiverse story. And at some point, we're going to bring them together and fight Spider-Man because Sony's had a hard on to do a Sinister Six movie for years. I mean, even since when, uh, you know, Sam Raimi was doing the films, they had a plan to maybe do a fourth film and other ones that would build to the Sinister Six. And they never got around to it. And we got pretty close with Spider-Man No Way Home, where they had, you know, villains from different multiverse stuff but there wasn't six of them. <laughs> so they got pretty close though. So this is, you know, I'm curious why the rated R and there is a, a theory I have at least for it, but I know a lot of people out there are going to be like, well, this is so bull crap. You know, they should have done Venom rated R and then Venom let there be Carnage rated R. To me, this is a clear difference and, and hear me out. Uh, Venom is a household name. They wanted that movie to reach as many people as possible. Now, I'm not saying it wouldn't have reached a lot of people being rated R, but it would have reduced it. And the way they marketed that movie and aimed for that movie, it made sense to make that movie PG-13. Because at that time, that's what was working in film, and that's what they wanted for the character. They wanted to not really neglect any audience members. They wanted most people to be able to go see that movie, and that led to massive success for that. Where I feel that Sony stumbled is with Morbius. Morbius, they tried to make PG-13, and I think that movie probably could have benefited from being rated R. If they knew from the beginning that they were gonna make it rated R, they could have made it a more intense movie, something hopefully more along the lines of Blade or something like that. They could have done a completely different movie with Morbius. Yeah, they could have with Venom also, but again, I feel like even though Ruben Fleischer said in an interview years ago, well, we did push the violence envelope a little bit, but nothing that really pushed us into full R rating. And uh, and that was always the thing, is that they didn't have a plan to make Venom rated R from the get-go. But Morbius, I feel like they should have had that plan. And that, who knows, maybe it would have made a worse movie, but it maybe would have made a better and more successful movie. So I think that's what they're learning. It's like some people are like, oh, they learned their lesson, they should have made all these rated R. No, I think, for my opinion at least, Morbius is the only one that should have been rated R and completely rethought of from the ground up way back when they first, you know, announced they were going to make the movie. And from then on, it should have been rated R. And I think that's one of the things that hurt that movie because Morbius is not a household name. He's a niche character like Craven. And so to me, these characters, it makes sense to take a little bit of risk with them. And they really did it with Morbius. And because of that, I think that's why it fell on its face. But Craven, I think this is their chance to go, you know what? We aren't going to reach a massive audience with Craven. This is not a movie that's going to make $800 million. 
So why not just go screw it? What do we want to do? Let's just let the director and writers just say, you know, give it to them. What do you guys want to do with Craven? And what we found out is Aaron Taylor Johnson, he wasn't there in person, but he did a video and sent in a video saying, hey, you know, what is this movie rated? It's rated R. And he goes, because Craven does not talk people to death. And I love that he just, the actor himself came out and said it. So we get full confirmation that this movie is going to be rated R. Then the other thing is they showed a sizzle reel slash trailer, which we are going to get soon uh, for this movie. I think they're going to be releasing it probably in May at some point, uh, or possibly they might push it to June for Spider-Verse. But we are going to see this footage sooner than later, uh, most likely. And this will be the first trailer, but I think they showed kind of just like a sizzle trailer kind of thing. And, uh, and this featured very violent battle sequences. Apparently there's a scene where Craven takes a bear trap and throws it at somebody and hooks their face with it. You know, uh, there's a part where he bites either someone's eye out or their nose off or their cheek or he bites a piece of their face off and spits it out. Um, yeah, apparently this is really, really violent. Russell Crowe is in the movie playing uh, Craven's father. And also there is someone playing uh, Craven's brother, the chameleon. So we're going to get three villains from the comic books as far as I know. I don't know if there's any other characters yet because uh, we don't know the full cast and who's, you know, who's playing who. But we have the chameleon in this movie, uh, Dimitri, uh, you know, has his name in the comic books. Uh, we are one of them. Uh, we have, uh, you know, Craven, obviously. And then it seems like one of the major villains or the, the thing that or the adversary that Craven's going to hunt down and fight in this is going to be Rhino. And this version of Rhino is an actual man who mutates into a rhinoceros uh, creature, like hybrid thing. So he might be a science experiment. He might be a mutant. We don't really know that kind of level of what this character is going to be, but he can transform himself into a, like with rhino armor and skin and stuff like that. So there's a guy sitting in a chair and he's like, you're going to find out why they call me rhino. And then he starts to mutate into the rhino. So that's really interesting. And what a cool villain too, or adversary, I should say, because Craven essentially is a villain too. Uh, they didn't say like, we're not going an anti-hero route or anything like that. He has like a, you know, kind of a motivation that some people might agree with where he's kind of, you know, more, you know, animal friendly, I guess, or something like that, or, you know, animal advocate, but he does hunt things and he, and he has hunted most things. And I guess this is him still growing into the hunter that we know, but now he's leaping from, you know, uh, you know, I guess animals and things like that or whatever he hunted before into, you know, uh, special humans with special abilities. And, uh, and we're going to kind of pursue that journey with this character. So, you know, I've always been intrigued when they announced this movie. I was, you know, of course I rolled my eyes. I'm like, oh man, especially after Morbius. I'm like, I don't know about this. You know, Madam Webb sounds like it has a neat idea, but I don't know about Craven. But the word around, you know, that the people who saw this footage said it actually kind of impressed them a little bit, you know, considering how all of our, most of our expectations are really way down here. So that's good to hear that the, at least it brought us, you know, even if we go from like if we're at a one right now for expectations and then we see this footage, if even if it brings us up to a three or four, it did its job. You know, it, it got us out of complete, you know, denial of wanting to see the movie. So that's neat, you know, because so maybe some of us might go, hey, still not excited, but it got me to watch it on streaming at some point, you know, but who knows, maybe it'll get some of those people in the middle to, you know, to move up to theater and maybe want to go see it in a the theater. So I'm intrigued. A rated R Craven movie, I think, is actually a smart business move, at least in my opinion. But I wonder, is the plan still to put Craven in a movie with Spider-Man at some point? Um, is that still going to be a plan later down the road? Or is this them just going, you know what? Venom's been doing great without Spider-Man. And even though we had that little tease at No Way Home and at the end of Let There Be Carnage, you know, ultimately we may not have major plans to have Venom interact with Spider-Man. We put a, a piece of the symbiote in the Marvel Universe, and now that can go be its own thing, and we can tell stories over there if we want to, and maybe Venom will be his own, you know, own character. It could be neat, you know, I don't know. Well, we don't really know what the plan is with Sony, and I don't even know if they know the plan sometimes, but what I heard from this sounds intriguing, and I'm looking forward to a trailer coming out at some point, and I'm, I'm actually piqued my interest. Uh, this is my favorite Spider-Man villain. I've said that since day one. Uh, some people have been like, then why don't you do a Craven vlog? And it's like, well, there's not that many good Craven stories because he's only been around 
for a couple decades in the beginning and only used sparingly, and then he got killed in the 80s. He, and we'll talk about that. I don't want to spoil that story yet. But if you haven't read Craven's Last Hunt, you really need to get on that. That is a m amazing story. No pun intended, because it takes place in some of the pages of Spider-Man and stuff. It's a crossover. But we're going to get into it on this show for sure. It's a great storyline. And it does not end the way you think it is, unless you know what the ending is, obviously. But first time reading it, I was like, did not see that ending coming. And it made me really take a different look at Craven the Hunter. And it really solidified him to me as one of you know Spider-Man's top villains, um, even though you know it doesn't end well for him in that storyline. But he is back in the comics now because of course, right? Uh, which is a, 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 you know an idea I never agreed with. Uh, you know I don't like that they brought him back. I think the way he you know said his goodbye is uh, is really fitting for the character. But you know you know you got to make a buck off this guy, so they brought him back in the comics. So we'll see if they give him like a new monthly series or a mini series as we build up to the movie. We'll see if that happens. But for now, I just wanted to share some of that CinemaCon news for those who didn't see it. Some people didn't believe me. Like, I would post something without checking first. You guys know me better than that. You know, I don't really go off pure rumors. I talked to people, a couple people, that actually were there in the room and saw some of the footage. And then I also saw some other YouTubers who saw it too and kind of compared notes and, and, and everything. And some people got some details different, um, you know, about like what Craven bites off of people's faces. But for the most part, um, this is all seems legit, and uh, and that's why I'm sharing it. So uh, yes, we will have some Craven episodes leading up to the movie, and maybe one or two after the movie comes out. But only sto uh, only stories that are taking place in this book right here. And maybe I'll do the Grim Hunt, which is a story where Craven comes back. That is not in here, but maybe we'll talk about that too, just so you can see how he came back in the comics. But we did briefly touch on that during the. Uh, Ben Riley and Kane, you know, clone stuff that I did leading up to uh, the Dark Web story. But just, we might reiterate some of it, um, you know, or do a more in-depth Grim Hunt breakdown at some point after the film comes out. So, yeah, let me know what you think. Are you a little bit more excited for Craven? Did anything I say here get you excited? I'm personally interested to see The Chameleon. If you remember the screenplay I wrote for the Spider-Man 4 way back when I worked at Sony in 2007 and dug up, you know, post-aneurysm, uh, that I wrote with a couple friends of mine, that script had Craven as the villain in it, and, but it also set up the Chameleon and the Sinister Six uh, in in our screenplay, and it had Mysterio at the beginning. You know that we put a note in there. You know, have Bruce Campbell play him. That would be awesome to kind of tie all of his cameos into this and have him be, you know, um, you know, play the the Mysterio just for the opening sequence of the story. Um, but uh, obviously, that movie never got made, and I don't know if we ever had a real shot. But we did write the full screenplay and you know turned it in and everything and crossed our fingers, but. Nothing ever happened with it. Um, the Lizard was the other villain in our film, too. It was Craven and the Lizard. Uh, and then uh, we had Chameleon in the background. And, and at the end, we revealed that one of the characters in the movie was actually the Chameleon the whole time. So, yeah, spoiler alert for a movie that'll never happen. <laughs> but that was our story. And and ever since then, you know, like, um, you know, reading that post-aneurysm and being like, wow, I really did love this Craven character. I wonder why. Because uh, apparently I wrote most of the Craven stuff in the script. And I went back and reread some of these stories. And then when they put this deluxe edition out, I got it and was like, yeah, I know. I Now I know why I love this character. He's just awesome. <laughs> He's just pure man, you know, just hunting and everything like that. And uh, and deadly, very deadly. And uh, and looks at Spider-Man as a, tr a potential trophy. He wants to kill him and uh, and hang his head on the wall with all the other you know animals he's hunted down, all the exotic animals, because uh, now he's hunting superhumans and stuff. So really neat character. I can't wait to see what they do with the movie. I'm still a little nervous, you know, obviously, you know, I, I think about Morbius, which I didn't think was nearly as bad as everyone said it was, but it was not a good movie, in my opinion. It was like a four or five. It was like in the middle um, because I went in with very low expectations after hearing everyone tear it apart, and I was surprised it wasn't as bad, at least in my opinion, but I hope this is actually decent, and it being rated R, we're going to see if that actually makes this a good movie or not. We'll find out together when it releases in October. So let me know what your thoughts are of a rated R Craven movie and what other violent things you'd like to see him do in the film. Because like I said, business sense wise, this makes sense. He's a niche character. There's no reason to do a PG-13 version and try to make a billion dollars off of it. Just spend your budget, keep it under $100 million, make it rated R, and just try to make that $100 million back and then some if you can. And I think that's what they're going for. So... We're going to find out if that works or not. Uh, but yeah, first rated R superhero Sony movie, you know, to start things off. Who knows if we'll get more? Find out in the future. But yeah, definitely uh, stay tuned to this channel and we'll do some Craven updates from time to time, trailer reactions, and we'll definitely talk about some comic books for sure. Thanks so much for watching the show as always. Leave your opinions down below and we'll keep talking down there. 
See you all in the future. Peace.